College Football Nerds here talking Alabama. Y'all are Alabama fans, so you know that Josh is with me. He's going to get nerdy with me, and we're going to talk about last year a little bit and what we think is going to happen this year, at least at a high level. And I just want y'all in the comments, before we get started, going to lay down some ground rules. Let us know in the comments what you think Alabama is going to do this year, and i got a challenge for you. Don't talk about quarterback because we aren't going to talk about quarterback except for one little thing in the beginning. We're not going to talk about quarterback. We're going to try to do this because everybody's talking about Mac Jones and Bryce Young, and we'll get into that in another video. We are not going to talk about quarterback. We're going to talk about everything else because we got something else planned for y'all. So, Josh, before we get into not talking about quarterback, I want to mention that Athlon Scott in the SEC, Newman, Trask, and Bo Nix, one, two, three which I think is a little ridiculous. Newman, uh, you said it before the show, that's pure speculation. That is pure hype. He might be number one. He might have the highest ceiling, but that's ridiculous. Bo Nix, y'all, okay. We weren't high on Bo Nix last year. Bo Nix against a, a depleted, banged up, bad Alabama defense last year went 15 of 30 for 173 yards, one touchdown, I know that uh, Mac Jones had two interceptions, two pick sixes. Uh, one really wasn't his fault. But he went for like 350 and four touchdowns and had like nine yards in attempt. Like he shredded that Auburn defense. So nobody came away from that game saying, hey, Mac Jones sucks and Bo Nix is great. But for some reason, people are forgetting about him. Maybe it's because Alabama's quarterback situation isn't settled. I think it is, but maybe it's not. So that's us not talking about quarterbacks. Josh Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about what I think is going to be the actual key to whether or not Alabama wins the national championship this year. It's the defense. A lot of people outside of the Alabama fan circles don't understand just how bad the Alabama defense was in terms of depth and injuries and being banged up at the end of the year, even at the beginning of the year. I want you to run through, just give us a primer on how that was not a vintage Alabama defense, and it was mostly because they were just absolutely decimated, and what we can look for this year to be a little different. Last year's Alabama team, the two of us talked about even early in the season that we we had doubts whether they were going to be a national title team, just purely due to the injuries at linebacker and the depth issues those presented. The loss of Moses and McMillan crippled Alabama from the jump. I think we were... We went from very skeptical to pleasantly surprised with what Alabama was able to do in a couple games early in the year, like the South Carolina game. Not that they were good, but they looked competent at linebacker, which is more than we expected. And then it slipped, and at the end of the year, uh, injuries mounted throughout the board. The front seven was more than just those linebacker injuries. Uh, right now, through the magic of the internet, I'm assuming Daniel is putting up a graphic that I helped him put together, where we kind of figured out that you could make an entire starting defense purely based off Alabama and Texas injured players from last season. And what you'll know if you look at that list, the defensive line are all Alabama players. Uh, DJ Dale missing... A good yeah. defense. A good yeah, defense. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's also true. You have multiple... There are multiple All-Americans in this defense, and I would say that would have been a top 10 defense nationally. Just the guys that were hurt might have been a top 5 defense nationally. It, it's actually probable they would have been a top 5 defense. DJ Dale and LeBron Ray were two of the three starters on the defensive line for Alabama. They did not play in the Auburn game. And when we talk about the Iron Bowl and being depleted, effectively of the front seven players, uh, four of the seven that started the season did not end the season or were supposed to be starters at the beginning of the season. Ebba Wigby was a guy that was supposed to come in and was rotating as a starter, and then he got hurt. Uh, and then by the end of the year, too, uh, there was a lot of depth issues. I, I think I'm trying to look into the like depth chart, but there was a... Mathis is a guy that played for a bit. He got hurt. I think it was in the Mississippi State game. Uh, Raquan Davis and Christian Barmore, I believe, both got hurt. Um, so e there were really multiple guys hurt all the time. Um, and by the end of the year, you were out four starters. But even worse, there were second and third string guys that were actually injured. Auburn was playing a team starting a third string defensive lineman and Michigan played a team playing second and third string defensive lineman. Alabama to be Alabama needs to be a really, really good defense. And last year that unit was an absolute shell of what it should have been. So I think 
when you start off talking about Alabama, the key is if they just maintain the projected starters of Ray, Dale, and Barmore, um, you're going to have a better defensive line than you probably had at any point last year. Again, Ebo Igby and Young are slated in as backups at the defensive end positions. And both of those guys, I, I'm pretty sure they were both starting um, at some point midseason due to the injury situation. Uh, so it <laughs> it can't get worse. Uh, Dylan Moses is an All-American level player. Um, I'm a little, I think the secondary is a lot less clear, but I, I also think that there's a lot more talent there. And a lot of the guys, even there, like uh, Jordan Battle, um, isn't listed as a returning starter in a lot of lists, uh, but he was starting in a, several games. I think he started the Michigan game. Uh, Josh Job was another guy. I know that he was projected as a starter last year and then didn't play uh, up until the end of the season. It's a very experienced unit. They've got to stay healthy, um, but they've got a lot of experience depth now. And more importantly, they've got a lot of guys that were coming back that didn't play last year that were better than the guys that played uh, did play last year. So probably one of the most likely units in the country to take a massive leap forward. I have a theory and and some of the theme of a lot of our previews in terms of teams that can win a national championship are twofold. One, the quarterback situation, which we're tabling. I I think you have to have an elite quarterback to win a national championship in, in this day and age. Um, Alabama has proven to be the one team that can do without, um, you know, with Jake Coker and Greg McElroy, although that was a different era. The other thing that I think is going to have a huge impact this year is the fact that COVID stuff has thrown a wrench into everything. I think it's going to be a really weird year. I think it's going to be like 2007 where it was just absolutely bonkers. I think you're going to have teams that lose, that shouldn't lose, that aren't going to make the playoffs because they had weirdness going on throughout the year and weren't prepared. One of the big keys for me is – Are you returning a quarterback and are you returning coordinators? And Alabama's doing both, which in the SEC, I think gives them a huge leg up. Talk about whether or not you think that's as big of a deal as I'm making it or if I'm just blowing it out of proportion. I think it's significant. uh, And look, most people don't have a lot of visibility to what happens in the offseason. And and even we don't. And when we do preseason previews, we're – we talk a lot about numbers from last year and we tend to be nebulous about the team because we're not beat writers. We don't get to watch practice. Um, But the thing is, I think sometimes we forget that even the coaches don't see their own team play games. I mean, they see see them practice and you know that they have a lot of insight and they have a trained eye, but you don't always know how people react in a game day situation. I think there's a real advantage this year to teams that return coordinators because Normally you have all spring as a coordinator to play with your team and put guys in different positions. And then you run a couple scrimmages and you do public scrimmage and see how they turn out. And then you have all summer and fall to sort of rethink what it is you want to do with that team and to rethink how you want to do plays, how you want to do formations, hand out the playbook, tweak it, get everybody ready. And in a fall camp, you're polishing this year. We have a longer fall camp. Uh, it's, It's basically about two weeks longer than it normally is, but It helps if you've got coordinators that have a lot of familiarity with the roster because those guys are already know going into fall what they want the team to look like. I think that's a big advantage for Alabama. And then, you know, we said we're not going to focus on the quarterbacks, but um, obviously they at least have a fairly proven option at quarterback. So Alabama is in a position to know what they're going to look like and they're going to have a they're in a position to actually, you know, sort of hit the ground running in fall camp to get their team up to speed and and to implement the playbook they want to implement. Whereas a lot of other teams are going to have a brand new coordinator tinkering around with the offense for half a fall camp and and spend very little time actually polishing what they want to put on the field. The other thing that's important to me, if I'm an Alabama fan thinking about, can I win a national championship this year is the offense is absolutely stacked. I mean, look, Mac Jones is is one thing, Bryce Young, whatever, at quarterback. Like What they're working with is huge. It's going to be an impressive offensive line. People think, oh, Alabama just lost two first-rounders at wide receiver. They still have two on the team. Nobody outside of maybe Alabama and a couple of teams that Jalen Waddell burned last year understand that Jalen Waddell wasn't really a starter, and he's going to be the first wide receiver off the board this year in the NFL draft. And that's how deep that Alabama wide receiver unit was. Oh, they got a bunch of freshmen coming in that are pretty good. Um, P. 
people forget Najee Harris is coming back. And I think he's, he seems motivated. You know, guys that come back for their senior year always seem motivated, so it's hard to tell. Um, but he he showed flashes last year um, that that brought us back to his freshman year, uh, where he was really productive and, and, and encouraging for Alabama fans. But people forget Trey Sanders got hurt before the season started, and, and that's a guy that that might be a complete game changer at that position. Also got a pretty good haul coming in, uh, true freshman. So. Um, my question to you is, so let's say that Alabama's defense is considerably improved over the batter unit we saw at the end of the year, but still not a 2016 Alabama defense or a 2011 Alabama defense, just a good, for Nick Saban's standards, Alabama defense. Is there enough there offensively to maybe make up that margin uh, versus the Alabama, the vintage Alabama defense of the past, given how stacked they are on the offense? I think there absolutely is, and I think you're crazy if you don't see it. Alabama the past two years has been um, an absolute, when healthy offensively, an unstoppable machine. Um, Tua had some bad games late in the year, but I think people forget 52 points against Auburn or 29 uh, points against an excellent LSU defense two years ago. They were unstoppable when Tua was healthy, and that's what most of the SEC has seen And they were doing that in large part because of the surrounding pieces. It's arguably the best, most talented, best, certainly one of the most productive returning offensive lines uh, in the SEC this season. Um, As you said, I I think I I remember somewhere I was reading a a set of previews for uh, for various teams in the SEC. And they talked about the question marks at Alabama. And it was like wide receiver. It was quarterback and then wide receiver. And uh, I think it was linebacker secondary, but I I just remember the wide receiver was one of the three things they listed. And I thought it was nuts because they had four guys that were effectively their starters, two of which return. Um, They're both uh, Smith and Laudel are going to be first or second round guys. And then there's a just crazy amount of depth. Uh, And to top it all off, like you said, with Trey Sanders, I guarantee you there will be at least two names that people are not aware of. There will be great players. We had the same conversation with Ohio State in their preview, the preview about that team. Alabama recruits at an insane level. And there are guys that didn't start because there were four first-round receivers starting last year. And they're going to come up, and it's going to turn out that, yeah, they're not quite as good as Jerry Judy, but they're only a third-round receiver and would start at a lot of other teams. Same way with the running back core. Um, I think they signed a five-star last year. Trey Sanders, I know, was the number one back. Um, I'll say unlike Zamir White at Georgia, um, Sanders' injury was um, a little less severe, too. He was, a, I believe, a broken foot, so he's probably going to be 100% this year. Um, so there's a lot there. And again, you say the same thing defensively, um, and maybe you want to comment on that, but I think one of the great mistakes you can make is just kind of underestimating how many new players will come up in a team like Alabama or Ohio State. Um, when you consider the fact they have a lot of returning production and a lot of guys coming back from injury— it's scary to consider that they're going to get healthier and better and you're going to throw two or three all-conference, all-American players into the mix that we don't know because that's the reality anytime you have somebody with a top five recruiting class on a consistent basis. Yeah, the offensive depth is scary. I mean, we just touched on Trey Sanders. Brian Robinson is a backup running back who's who's built like an SEC running back, looks like an SEC running back, but the other Robinson, true freshman, um, a kid six and a half yards of carry and, and and he's you know brian robinson this year might be the fourth string running back uh on this team which tells you a lot and that's not even counting guys they got they got coming in so it's 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 wild i want to talk a little bit about the schedule um i think nationally the tenor is alabama schedule is a lot harder this year people are licking their chops thinking now's where we see alabama maybe not make it to the playoffs because their schedule is finally hard. And I want to point back to a couple of a couple of concepts and have you touch on them. So one, people don't understand Alabama's 2015 schedule was like one of the hardest schedules in modern football history. I think they played like six teams that won 10 games. SEC teams that they played, that they murdered, absolutely murdered their bowl slate. Um, people don't realize how hard that schedule was, and it's just discounted. Alabama has a couple of years there after that where the teams they played weren't as good. The, st- 
out of conference opponents they scheduled. And so the Alabama had such a slim margin for error where if they're injured 2017 Auburn and drop that game, they need help to get in where, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy to think like they lose one game and they don't get in, they murder the rest of the schedule, but because they didn't have any of those 17th best team in the country or 20th best team in the country that they would kill like some of these other teams struggle with, but get a win. They didn't have that on their resume. Well, this year they've got a USC that's probably going to be ranked at the end of the year. They've got Georgia on their schedule. I would argue for all the Alabama haters out there that are licking their chops, the scary thing about this year's Alabama schedule is it actually does give them margin to drop a game and still comfortably get in the SEC championship game, comfortably get in the playoffs with one loss, Tell me what you think. I mean, I would agree with that. If Alabama loses the Georgia game or loses the USC game and then runs the table, they are probably in the playoff. Um, in fact, I would say if they lose the Georgia game or US, the, US, the uh, USC game early, uh, or if they lose to LSU or Auburn um, and don't get knocked out of the SEC title as a result, if they win the SEC title, they're going to be in. Uh, they're just going to be. The schedule's pretty hard. If you beat Georgia, Alabama... Uh, if you go USC, Georgia, LSU, and Auburn, and you go three and four, three out of four of those four games, um, they're going to be in the playoff, uh, assuming something weird doesn't happen like 2017 where they lose to Auburn and uh, don't make the SEC championship game. And even then, they're going to have a strong argument again this year. Uh, I think to your point, and we've talked about this a lot, the best thing you can do as a team to make the playoff is play a lot of like top 10 to top 25 teams. You, I, I, when I mean that, I mean teams ranked 10th through 25th. Teams in the top 10 are hard because you drop two of those and we tend to knock you out of contention, and that's really unfair. Um, Alabama arguably has a couple of those, but when you look at the schedule, uh, and I know you've touched on it, and now I'll out myself, I'm not as high on LSU this year. Um, Auburn was is a good team. I don't know that they're an elite team. Um, Georgia is going to be a very good team. They're probably going to be easily one of the best defenses, which could be the real sticking point in game three. But that offense has a tremendous amount of turnover. And and I think it's going to be hard for Georgia to play that game in week three. And then again, USC, I don't think they're, at least in terms of overall quality, one of the 10 best teams in the country in the opener. Alabama could go through this slate, and it's a slate that has several really respectable games without the like top five landmines, at least on paper. And that's been their problem the past few years is that they've had those top five team landmines where they drop a game to Auburn or they drop a game to LSU and they kind of get knocked out quick, quickly. It's the opposite here. They've got four or five really good games. They're going to have several ranked games on their schedule. And I don't know that they're going to play the super team that knocks them out quite the way they have the past few years. Um, I actually think the schedule is better equipped for them. And, and you can make the argument like Clemson, right, that has a really easy schedule and that's a better path. The problem for Alabama is they don't ever have a Clemson schedule where they, like Clemson may only legitimately play maybe one ranked team this year in Notre Dame. Maybe there's two and it will be an overranked ACC team, quite frankly. Um, Alabama's going to play a top five or top 10 team. and But the complaint like the past couple of years is they only play a couple of them. It's like, well, you lost the only game that mattered when you, you lost to LSU or you lost... LSU and Auburn, those are the only two games that mattered. They're going to have a chance to prove themselves over and over, and they can drop a couple, and you're still going to know that they're a top 10. Top. And this is where the Texas A&M joke comes in. I mean, but Texas A&M has a much easier schedule this year. They can be no improvement over last year, and they're going to be a top 17 team just by going, you know, 9-3 and three, uh, with their schedule. The last two seasons – Alabama could not win their division if they lost one game. And that's what that's what's hard to explain to people when they're like, well, you didn't even win your division. Yeah, but your team could lose three games and win their division. Alabama loses one game and they're out. And that's where you talk about Clemson. We've touched on this a little bit just in, in sideline conversations. I don't love, if I'm Clemson, I don't love the situation they're in because they lose to Notre Dame, they might be out. They might run the table, lose to Notre Dame, and be out. And, and that's just – that's tough. That's that's a tough way to operate with 18- and 22-year-old kids that are having to be on every single week. Um, so that scares me. All right. Um, 
We haven't been picking teams for like national champions or anything like that. We have been picking kind of where we think they will land in their division because um, it's still June. But uh, we need to wrap this up. So real quick for me, I, I got Alabama winning the West. I think Auburn and LSU take a step back. A&M, even if they take a step forward, I don't think it's going to be enough to really to really make a lot of noise. I think they beat Georgia in week three probably, but what what should scare Alabama fans is Georgia's going to get a lot better throughout the course of the year, probably more than Alabama, unless they do make a quarterback switch. Um, so they could easily could beat Georgia in week three and lose to them in Atlanta. Um, but I, I definitely have – Alabama won in the West this year, and I think this is one year where they can drop a game, still win their division, uh, and do it comfortably. Tell me what you got, and then we'll wrap it up. I think Alabama is clearly one of the front runners this year. Everybody knows it and accepts it, uh, and even though they're usually considered a top four team, in their own way, I think they're almost underrated this season. Um, not only do I think they're the best team in the West, but Alabama should be kind of a return to form how they've been the past few years when they're one of the true juggernauts of college football. Everybody has a lot of turnover. Last year was probably an unusually good year for most elite teams. There were a lot of really, really good teams. Most of them, like Clemson's losing a lot of uh, a lot of guys across the board, especially offensively, and they're going to be um, – people are going to focus on ETN and Lawrence, but there's a lot of losses elsewhere. Alabama loses Tagovailoa. They lose first-round draft picks. The difference is they're in – they are in the best position to lose people of anyone in college football. They are the best recruiting team and they are the best recruiting team overall year to year by some margin, maybe with Ohio state and Georgia nipping at their heels more Georgia than anyone. Um, but uh, I mean, they, they in term because of the injury issue really, which caused them to get some guys back like Dylan Moses, they're in a better situation than they should have been this year. Um, so I, I think they're the front runner in, I mean, it's going to be also interesting to see again, you know, that was a monster recruiting class. They just signed once again, which is usually like 24 sevens top recruiting class. Um, I follow recruiting enough to know that it's considered to be one of the best uh, pass rush outside linebacker classes uh, in modern recruiting history. Um, there's going to be some names out of that group that are going to be household names and they've got the kind of roster where they can role play those guys. And that's a luxury only a couple teams in the country have. Um, so you might, you mix that luxury with the roster they have returning with the level of talent that they get to play as spot players. Um, Alabama is easily one of the main contenders, uh, for, for being your national champion. Again, we're not picking it, but we put Ohio state as a team likely to make the final, um, Alabama is easily the other one, in my opinion. All right, you Bama fans, let us know in the comments what you think Alabama is going to do this season. And also, just glad that y'all are back with us. Uh, had a long break uh, with COVID and everything else going on, but we are back. We are consistently going to put out content leading up to the season. Uh, also, keep an eye out for that forthcoming video uh, on Alabama quarterbacks. And we're doing other previews in a no uh, you guys like more than just Alabama football. I'm sorry I said you guys. I meant y'all. Uh, thanks so much, y'all. Have a great week, and God bless.